Good morning and welcome to our weekly men's volleyball press conference. We will start the press conference with an opening statement from head coach Alan Knipe, and then we'll open it up to questions from the media. Well, I wanted to recap a little bit um, from last week. And, uh, you know, it's always an important week when it's your senior senior night leading up to you on the last weekend of the conference. And I thought, uh, I thought it was special for both Irvine and us, you know, both both teams playing for something, you know, that it really mattered to both programs, both matches. And uh, there's just, a, you know, there's a lot of good guys on that team, a lot of guys I've known for a long time through connections with our own guys. So, um, you know, that match was great. And I, I know it was a special senior night for them. And I don't, uh, I think Irvine played incredibly well in that match. And I know our guys didn't, didn't feel real good about some of the things um, that, that how we performed in some areas. Um, but that's uh, it is what it is. You can do a whole lot about it, but 24 hours later, you could, and uh, that's where I was uh, most proud of the guys of the response that we had and the way we played on on Saturday night here. And uh, we played a a really really good game. Thought Aiden set really well, you know, hitting well well over 400 as a team is a really big number in a big match against a really good team. So. Um, but I thought, you know, I thought our passing was great. I thought the middles were great. I think Dearis was hit a thousand, you know. Um, uh, Skyler was tremendous, and Satorius has just had had just a just an amazing conference all all year. But he had a he had a great match as well. And then you know, getting Clark back out there was great, and him and Nathan using both of those guys in that spot at different in different roles was really good for us. So it felt it felt good to complete the uh, the conference and be able to kind of shape our team a little bit more. And there's still some other guys we got, uh, you know, Dayton Hillis got out there and did a great job as a serving sub and got, uh, you know, Sonny out there who's been doing a great job in practice. So um, I'm really proud of where we're uh, where we're going and what we've done and leading up to uh, to, to Saturday night to the senior night, <clears throat> you know, I thought, uh, one, just a huge thank you to everybody in the department who made that happen and all, you know, whether it be sports information or whether it be our marketing and everybody who put that that show on for us was was tremendous. Those guys deserve that, but it was so well done beforehand that there was no emotion or even effort have to go into it it just rolled and i thought it was a great celebration for a great crowd i mean a great group of seniors and i know the crowd really appreciate it i got a whole bunch of emails over the weekend from people of how special that was so thank you to everyone for that and then um getting into this week you know uh we leave tomorrow uh for for hawaii for the Big West Tournament, we play the the winner of San Diego Northridge on Friday in the semis. We have a bye through the quarters, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great time of the year. This is you know this is what you you prep for. I know our guys are excited about that, and we get a good opportunity to prep today like we normally do. We get a good solid practice in tomorrow, we and fly after that, and uh, get after it. And I, I know the guys are excited to continue to fight and play volleyball at the level that they played on on Saturday night. Obviously, that has to be the standard moving forward. And you know, we have a lot to play for. And obviously, the focus is on the Big West tournament. And uh, um, to get us, the focus will stay on the Big West tournament, knowing that the prize is to come home and uh, and play in the, the NCAAs. So um, look forward to exciting time for our, our team, exciting time for our campus and our community. And we look forward to it. Uh, Coach, through all the training, through all the injuries uh, throughout the season, just the developments, uh, is this the best that your team has been playing uh, from this season, uh, from the beginning of the, of the season up to this point? Well, you certainly hope so. You know, that's how you design. That's that's how you design it. it. Doesn't always go how you design, but that's that's what you want out of it. But what you do want is um, that you know what. I don't think a lot of people realize what we went through with some stuff with Lazar and some stuff with Clark Godbold and losing those guys, you know, during that that Hawaii series. And uh, I think it gets lost in how good of a job Nathan Harlan did and how good of a job Dearis did, and that's a good problem. Um, but what is really good for us as a program is all four of them are healthy now, and. Um, and they all have significant playing time under their belt, you know, and we've had a whole bunch of different pieces get on the floor in different spots and different serving subs, blocking subs, setters, double subs, whatever it might be. Um, but the goal, to go back to your question, 
the goal is to continue to be playing your best volleyball late in the season and to not have a destination of feeling I've always told our teams that you know if if we put, if we have our last practice before whatever final we're playing and whatever that last game is you want to always feel like you wish you had just one more practice there's a little bit more that you could get better at if if you're really buying in to the idea of getting better all the time then there is no final product there's just a spot on the calendar that you time out and uh, so that's where we're at right now um and you talked about the injuries a little bit but just Throughout this whole process of the regular season, what has been the most challenging part uh, of it through all of the subs and, and, and whatnot? Yeah, um, it's not really challenging as much as um, it's, 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 it's balancing the, the amount of jumps for some guys so you don't jump them into problems. It's not, uh, it's managing jumps and swings so you don't um, force them to go back into some problems because of what you want out of it. Um, and it's, it's about having the trust of the guys that are in your gym training that the training and the systems and the, and the program can withstand a player or two not being out there every, every set or every match. That's easier said than done because I would imagine most coaches uh, are a little bit a creature of habit on the idea that you you play the guys you trust the most. You play the guys you trust what you see the most, and you see the most in practice. So when you're balancing jumps and guys aren't going all the time, you're not seeing that. So it's I think the, the, the I guess the challenging part, if there is one, is the communication with the guys that what the intent is and why. What is the why behind the moves? What is the why behind the guys? Who's up next and why? What can they do to be that guy? And when it's moving around and changing out of your control sometimes, that just means a whole lot more communication, which is something that we pride ourselves on. But that's the most important thing to the guys is that they may not – it's rare that all your players all the time are going to agree with everything. They're, they're spectacular players, and they're, they're playing Division I volleyball, especially in our program, because they believe in themselves, because they believe they should be on the court, because they want to be on the court. So they don't necessarily have to agree with everything, but hopefully they understand of, the, of what it is and the why behind it. And hopefully you can back that up with the what they can do to give themselves a better chance to be part of the why. And uh, there's no perfect solution to that other than, you know, open and honest discussion away from the competitive environment, away from the practice gym, away from the, the competition gym, and give them the respect, the, give them the respect that they deserve of what they're putting into this. And, uh, and I think by doing that, I think we can all get to a common point of we do understand and if, that's, if that means for some guys that it burns a little deeper because they don't agree with it, and then hopefully that they, they change some of that in practice by following the what that we talked about. And like I said, it's, it's not perfect. In our program, I really love the communication that flows from the players to the coaches. But th there are tough moments. And, uh, but that's for every team in every season. But I'm, I'm really proud of our guys. Uh, last year, leading up to the Big West tournament, uh, you beat UC Irvine twice and then had to play them that third time in the tournament, mm -hmm. lost to them in the semifinals of the Big West tournament. Uh, whether you play them or not this year, does a loss late in the season, learning from it, uh, help even more coming into this year's tournament? Well, I've always been one that said, you know, you can, you can learn as much from winning as you can from losing. And I do really believe that that's, there's a lot of truth in that. However, what I did tell our guys is that, uh, you know, the difference, the difference really, though, when it, when it is a loss in that situation is um, you can't replace the feeling of anger and frustration or embarrassment or what, what you know, just whatever, whatever it is, the competitiveness that, that, that drives an athlete sometimes. And... You know, that feeling sometimes, and there's not a bad thing to make sure you're aware of what that felt like. If you felt like, to a certain regard, it was some of it was self-inflicted. And, um, and I, in no way am I taking anything away from how well Irvine played on Friday night. But I would definitely think that there's some guys that felt like they wanted to, that they wanted to do something about that. And uh, so when you don't have any time in between a Friday match to a Saturday match, there's no training period, there's no anything. It's purely 
committing to what you're going to do want to one another and your gut check and how, what you are going to do. And uh, the guys responded really well. So hopefully they use that feeling and what it forced in their response in themselves as a as an individual and as a collective team to drive that we want to stay in that realm. We want to be that team playing one way in all the matches we have left. Coach, um, on Saturday night, um, Aiden, your son, hit 3,000 career assists. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about that milestone just – um, for a player, and then, of course, on the personal side, um, how proud are you as a parent? <laughs> well, I think that um, I think I mentioned this earlier in the year when Mason, uh, you know, got to his milestones and digs. It's um, when your program's been around and playing at a high level since 1970. Um, if you if you reach the top ten in anything in this program, you've done career-wise, you've done really really well. Um, it's a big number, and what's what's kind of scary about that big number? We only played ten matches in 21. You know, we had, you know we had a third of a season, and uh, the other part is that if you look at that list of names to be around, uh, if you're a setter at Long Beach State and your your names are along the names of, of the guys on that list, you're in rare air, and uh, and he deserves that. He's put in a tremendous amount of time and weathered a lot. I, you know, I've I've seen it not only as the head coach, but I've watched, you know, from the ankle reconstruction surgery to the no jumping rules in the falls to the PRP and everything that he went through, and watching him change his physicality uh, in a huge way. Um, he's pushed and pushed and pushed, and people don't see the hours away from the court you know, even in our practice gym, but they certainly don't see the hours away from even the practice gym that it took to get him to the, the spot that he could be, you know, the leader of our team offensively. So I think everyone's proud of him. Um, he's, had a, he's had a tremendous year, and it's a wonderful stat. Um, I know a couple of the former setters reached out to him directly, which is really, really cool. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful group to be part of. But as I said, not only Aiden, anyone in our program in a career stat who gets into that elite group of top ten, you have done some amazing things over a long period of time. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.